So the third and 20 dynasty podcast it's jt joined by frank jake and lunas the whole crew is here uh we are in spring fellas we are in spring and i don't know i'm just gonna kick us off with the news and notes uh we have the coaches meeting uh, i forget what this time's called but all the coaches are getting together you want to know what it's called it's called we get to see that annual picture and how yeah. awkward it is i yeah. fucking love that i love how because some of these coaches are big and they put these chairs that they have to sit in so close together everyone yeah. is like you could just tell Oh geez, I just destroyed everyone's ears. I'm sorry about that. You can just tell everyone is just like so scrunched in. I love it. Yeah. Um, I I always like every year there's like one or two guys where I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot their coach. Um last year it was like uh who was it? Kevin Stefanski. I was like, oh yeah, he's a coach. And um oh what's his name for, for the Chargers? Oh, Brandon Stanley. Brandon Stanley. Yeah. Every year I'm just all, oh yeah, these guys coach. I forgot about them. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right. Let's get into some dynasty talk. Uh let's just start off with what I found to be pretty interesting, but I think I've, I have a different takeaway from you guys. It's um, like exactly what I told you like two weeks ago when this happened. Yeah, and I still think you're wrong. Um uh, <laughs> John Lynch was talking about the quarterback situation for the San Francisco 49ers. For those of you who are unaware, John uh, John Lynch is the GM for the 49ers and he essentially said that it's Brock Purdy's job, but they don't know when Brock Purdy's going to come back. So Sam Darnold and Trey Lance are going to split first team reps um to start training camp. I don't know what you guys think from this, but I'm just going to put it from my pro Trey Lance spin on it, and you guys can tell me why I'm wrong. I just think this is a team that's trying to drum up trade interest for potentially Brock Purdy. I, I know it's that's not what originally seems like, but look, Trey Lance was your starting quarterback. Kyle Shanahan said it himself. Kyle Shanahan was like, yeah, Trey was our, our starter. He was our starter for a game and a quarter. Brock Purdy did great. We thought Trey was going to do great. Like, Trey got hurt. It's just unfortunate. It is what it is. Now Trey's back. He's got his chance to win the job back. But if this team is going and saying, the 49ers, this team, if they're saying, hey, we have this other guy that we think we're fine starting, and then they also just brought in this backup, Sam Darnold, why don't they essentially just stock up their picks, trade Mr. Irrelevant for, I don't know, a third or a second in, in the NFL draft? And now they have Trey Lance with Sam Darnold as their backup quarterback. Brock Purdy, when you look at his like actual functional stats and you look at his underlying stats, he wasn't a good quarterback. The 49ers were just a very good team, so they kept winning. And it's not that hard to see. Like he wasn't like making crazy throws or anything, and he wasn't the real reason this team was getting led to victory. He was just kind of a, a functional piece in this offense, and the team itself was just very good. It's the same thing as Jimmy G. Like Jimmy G is not a great quarterback. The team's just good, so the team happened to win. I don't know. I'm still never a believer in quarterback wins, and while I think Brock Purdy was better than the 250th or whatever it is overall pick, I don't think he's actually a franchise quarterback, and I think if you could just get draft picks for what essentially was your seven, the last pick in the draft, why not just do that? I think the big problem for like whoever's starting for this team is that when you look at the 49ers organization with John Lynch and Shanahan, I honestly think that those two probably have the best relationship of any head coach GM pair in the league. And the fact of the matter is the one who is going to start is just the guy that they like and who the fuck that is. They don't got like, they're both football guys. I don't really don't think they give too many shits about the numbers. They care about, oh, he commands the locker room. Shanahan is just like, oh, I just feel comfortable with him, right? We've seen Shanahan do so many weird things just because he's choosing someone he likes over someone that may have the most upside or the most talent, which from a Trey Lance perspective is somewhat concerning. But the question, the real money question to me, though, is, not whether or not he works out in the 49ers, it's whether or not he works out in general. Because if the 49ers decide to move on from him, other teams, I'm going to assume, are going to be pretty darn interested in, in trading for Trey Lance. Exactly. So, like, 
it, it, like it, whether he he or Purdy ends up being the starter, it's like okay, can he force his way out? And are other teams still going to believe in him? And is he going to actually succeed in the league? Like it doesn't matter what fucking team that's on from a dynasty perspective. So anyone buying low? Anyone buying low? Yes. On on Trey Lance? On Trey Lance? I'm, What's low? What does he value? It depends on what the price is. I do. Like I don't think it's Trey. that low. I think it's still what a about one ten. I would never sell Trey Lance for one ten. I mean, listen, I'm just saying something to start off. I'd probably rather have Lance than than one ten as well. But let's just the start upside off is the ups the upside's too great. Yeah, give me give me Lance. I'll take Lance over one ten as well. One oh six. Trey Lance. Lance. If Trey Lance was coming out of college right now, I'd have him as the number one quarterback, just because of his rushing upside where he brings you above these two. Like, like there's just no. We we saw Trey Lance be like functional in NFL offense. It wasn't like he was bad when he played. He wasn't so I, he also wasn't great. He he was pretty good. Like his game against when he first came in against the Seattle Seahawks, I'm pretty sure, where he only played a half, he scored like twenty two fantasy points and had like a really good game in a half. I like we we've only seen like a hand, less than a handful of games of Trey Lance and what what we've seen he's been pretty good. Like he's made think- good throws. I think I'd give the slight edge to Trey Lance, um, but I think that's the equal value pick. 106. 106. Yeah, you're definitely not going a top fiver. Like, I would. Like, I give the edge to Lance, but I think 106 is the one that's like the appropriate value. Unless JT, you would go further than that. And I like Trey Lance a lot. Like, I'm. Yeah, I I would take him over every player in this draft not named Bijan Robinson. Oh, so you take him over 102. Mm-hmm. Not that you'd ever probably have to trade 102 for Trey Lance. You yeah, you don't have to. I mean, keep like trade cut says 110. I, I don't believe keep trade cut, but keep trade cut. But you you value him at that. Yes, because this is a quarterback who, I mean, we saw he didn't struggle nearly as much as Justin Fields did in the start of the season. And Justin Fields started a whole season prior to that, not a whole, but essentially a whole season prior to to his sophomore season. And Justin Fields struggled tremendously uh, in in the first like two months. And now all of a sudden he's quarterback seven, uh, where, which we'll get to uh, on um, in this ADP. I don't see why Trey Lance couldn't. And whether or not it's with the 49ers who did spend three first round picks to get Trey Lance, yeah. um, he's going to be on another team. If, if it's not with the 49ers, the, the um, Miami traded a second round pick for Josh Rosen. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's going to be a team that's going to pick up Trey Lance and try and you know build Trey Lance and there are plenty of teams that need a quarterback so I'm buying in on the Trey Lance I don't know bad news I don't know what to call I don't know if I can go as far because I don't know if like heading forward and into next year like you're taking them over guys like Stroud and Bryce Young um yeah Yeah. that's where it gets tough for me but I thought we deemed the price 106 we did but no yeah but I'm saying I would pay high yeah yeah, but that's freaking JT he's a crackhead and like yeah, like JT said, you're never actually giving up one of. Yeah, like you never. I, have to so give obviously, up. I would trade 106 for Trey Lance. You guys would trade. Trey I would Lance trade 106. 106. Whatever the fair no, market I, I price would, is, you're trying to get as close to a deal as possible. So like, if I'll you can get Lance. on top of 106 for Lance, because like like JT said, he's apparently worth 110 on keep trade cut. Um, probably more than that in most leagues, but I wouldn't be surprised if you could like. Especially when this draft rolls around, if the if the NFL draft goes as expected, and Jameer Gibbs, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Anthony Richardson all get what people think their draft capital is going to be, boom, that that one hundred six is going to be juiced. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, tra- Trey Lance though is just. Uh... From a prospect perspective, I just think even right now, with knowing what we know about Trey Lance, I think he's a safer prospect than Jameer Gibbs. I, I like Jameer Gibbs. Now, let, let, me, I don't dis- let me phrase the question like this, though. If you have Lance, are you looking to sell? Are you like, okay, I just want to get out. I can still get out for a first, no. right? No. If you have Lance, you have to be holding here. I mean... You probably put a top three dynasty pick into him to get him, or if not, the equivalent of that in some kind of trade package. And and to see him go down is obviously heartbreaking, but at this point, you're 
you know, kind of committed to to seeing it through at least a little bit. Let him get back on the field and see how he plays. I mean, I under like you're basically saying just cash out now, assuming he's not going to do anything. But I I just don't like. I think you said it. Like if it's not with the 49ers, it's going to be elsewhere. So like, there Trey Lance's value is probably going to go up from here. Whether it's a lot, I don't know, but I think at least a little bit. From from my experience, what we've seen a lot from Trey Lance in in leagues is this scenario where the person that has him is kind of what you're doing, just hard holding, and yeah. it's still going to take probably like more towards JT's valuation for the person who has him to consider. They they're going to want that at least like what Tua esque price to yeah. move Lance at, at least probably mm-hmm. more. So. I have Lance in one league. People send me seconds. Definitely hold. Yeah, you're you're never gonna do those trades, and then yeah, people are just gonna offer them. Send a trade offer for Otten. Yeah, dude, I don't I don't really like Zacchaeus, and I mean, are you open to trading twenty five picks or other things on your roster? Uh, yeah, just let me know. Um, okay, let's go into okay. So we could touch on Brock Purdy and Sam Darnold for a bit here. This news yeah. is clearly a positive for sam darnold even though it's like it doesn't really matter all that much at least you hear is the coach saying something good about him (laughs) like i mean listen i was the one that said this darnold signing was a little fishy and i just think this is continuing to read a little fishy to me that is true you did say that like you gotta watch out for darnold in here jake was the one i got i got I got I was the only one, and you guys all made fun of me for it. But here we are, weeks later, and the coach is like, "Yep, Darnold's going to take the first team reps." I know. Yes, this is a little fishy. I still think it's a little fishy. Um, I realistically, like I said, do think Lance is the opening day starter. I don't think it really matters. But it, it I think Darnold is a is more Purdy than capable backup. No, all right, not. No, okay. Purdy will not be. Um. But Darnold is a guy that can at least push a guy in camp. And if Lance is going to think he's going to have a cakewalk to the opening day starter, I just don't think that's the case. I think it might be good for him in the in the end here where he gets some competition in camp. But I think this is the best team Darnold's going to have ever by far. He was on those shitty Jets teams, those shitty Panther teams. Now you put him with a team that has a capable offensive line, weapons like Kittle, Debo, Ayuk. And and an offensive genius in, in Shanahan, a head coach here, like this is the best thing that could have happened to him. And I think he kind of took a pay cut to come play in, in San Francisco. Obviously, it's a it's you know home for him. He's a you know California kid, went to USC. Like it makes sense. I'm not saying it doesn't, but like it seems like he definitely could have got more elsewhere. And this just reads fishy to me. If Lance struggles even the slightest, I wouldn't be shocked for Shanahan to turn to Arnold. I just wouldn't. I, I will say, though, if... I if, can't go that far. If Purdy can't... Well, when, when is Purdy, like, projected to be uh, back? Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Is it going to be, injured. like, a significant portion of the season that he's going to miss? It's a great question. Um... Because I mean, I'm not a doctor. Okay, let's assume that Purdy comes back, it can come back around week five, right? He misses like the first month or month and a half of the season. This is like still Trey Lance's job to lose then. Because uh, let's be real, he's going to have the slight edge over Donald. They're going to say 50 50. No, they, they're, they're going to be rooting for Trey Lance to win that battle. Yeah. And. Trey Lance in those first five games basically has his open audition to if he's the starter for the rest of the season. If he starts five and oh, they're not going to bench his ass. So the one thing I did see was week three or four. So it's six six months from the beginning of March. So April, May, June, July, August, September. We're looking at September. Yeah. I've read six or seven. My guess would be like towards like the end of September, beginning of October. Yeah. That, I feel like that's the best guess. Man, I feel like this, other than the fact that the 49ers team is fucking disgusting, this is not a fun scenario if you're Lance. 
No, because you no. have now two guys that no, because... realistically can take your job. On top of the fact yeah, that I mean, he's think, never gotten in a rhythm. Problem. That's that's what I'm saying. Like even someone like Justin Fields, like he didn't really get into a rhythm like until the second half of the season. Like the first few weeks of the season, they looked terrible. He looked awful the first couple weeks of the season. And then like he just kind of turned it on and got into a rhythm. If you're Trey Lance now, like you sat on the bench your first year. Your second year, you played one full game in a fucking monsoon where it's impossible to get anything going, and then you get injured in the first quarter of your second game. And then now you, you'll have, what, three or four games to prove yourself before Purdy comes back and people are going to be asking for him if you're not perfect? Like, that's tough. That's a really hard scenario. Yeah, exa- that's exactly what I was thinking, is that scenario is not fun. And I, I just think it would be a little bit better if he was at least – had a stretch of games in the NFL where he was like, okay, yeah. I played well. That that little bit of confidence. It's like, listen, when I'm in the rhythm, when I'm feeling it, I have a good team. Like I can go out here and play. He's he had, I don't think he's had that moment. No, he yeah. hasn't had the chance and every other young QB has. And I, I think at the end of the day, that's almost why I'm kind of, even though the 49ers is obviously the best situation for him. I hope that, he would just beat out Purdy, but I kind of almost hope that he would get an yeah. opportunity on a different team. So at the, at the end of the day, it's essentially: Do you think Lance is a better quarterback than than Brock Purdy or Sam Darnold? That's essentially your bet. I if do you think, think he no, is. then you just shouldn't have Trey Lance because if you don't think he's better than Brock Purdy or Sam Darnold, and he's still worth a first, get him off your team. See, I, I don't, I don't think, think that's think the question though, guys. because. I think he is better than those players, but I in the third and 20 league, I am still questioning whether or not I should market out Lance and just get the 106 that I at least think I could get in the realm of that I could get. That 106 is significantly more than what you have to pay for Purdy or Darnold. Yeah, but can you get can you get Justin Fields for 106? Can you get no, Kyler obviously not. Just yeah, feels so, you feel yeah, so, so but if you think Trey Lance is better than those guys, and you think he's going to be a starting quarterback for 49ers, that's where his price is going to be if he is better than those guys and he's the starting quarterback for the 49ers. I do because think that he is better, but I don't know if he'll be able to like undisputably prove it. And like he's going to only have like three games to, and I think that's unfair to him. But that's what makes it true. Again, we're talking about. Brock Purdy and Sam Darnold. We're not talking about. I'm not. I'm not Justin thinking about Sam Darnold. And Joe Burrow. I'm not, I'm not thinking about <laughs> yeah. Sam Darnold. I'm, t- All right, I'm not thinking about Sam Darnold. Purdy. But I'm telling you, like, with the where the team is at, like it, that. That's what my concern is. I'm rooting for Trey Lance because I think he's better than them. And if not, then I hope he gets straight down to them, like Baltimore or something. But uh, and I mean, we'll get to that situation in a bit. But. I guess that's the only fair. I'm, I'm still with you. I'd rather have Lance in 106, and I'm not trading Trey Lance because I think he's too talented and his upside is too high. I just hate the situation that he's in with, like, I, the kind of expectations I, I, that are going to be there and that he won't be able to get a stretch of, like, eight games. So, I mean, I hope that I'm wrong, and he does. But I think we're seeing an overcorrection. We're going to talk about a different player where I think the panic meter was too high um, earlier this year. I think we're seeing an overcorrection now where the panic meter is just too high on Trey Lance again. And I think it's all going to get corrected come OTAs and training camp and everything. Cause then it's, Oh, he's healthy. Look at him. He's back. You're going to have the 49ers beat reporters. This is definitely not the time to sell Lance. You at least wait a few months. If you really are out on Lance, you just wait a few months. Cause they're not going to draft a quarterback. Maybe no. he gets traded. Like maybe that happens. There's a world where that happens. But other than that, he's going to be getting a lot of hype come June, July. And if you really are out on Trey Lance, then you trade him then. But now is not the time. So, yeah, you're definitely on the trade forum stance. Yeah. Yeah, I would buy him right now. No, I'm, I, I sent out offers, and not in our home league, but in my – I have a dynasty league with my friends from Temple. I've already been trying to trade for him. Joe's saying it's not which quarterback is better. It's who's better runs that specific offense. Well, we've learned like over time, like all the best coaches tailor their offense to the players that they have. They don't, you know, make that player fit their offense. So if Kyle Shanahan truly is a good coach, he would make that offense fit Trey Lance. I will say he Um, did run like when I, I remember watching that Houston game and stuff like Shanahan did have a lot of specific plays designed for, for Lance. Um, so there is a, an element of that, but 
at the same time, Joe is right in that Shanahan, if he's just more confident in in Purdy, he's going to say, I don't give a shit about the talent and the upside. I'm just going to play the guy that I think is going to win me the football game on Sunday. Yeah. And, and I, I'm assuming we're all still on the hard sell Purdy for market price. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Okay, moving on um, to our next topic, which is <laughs> kind of a come down from the other one. The Bengals signed Irv Smith. Um, eternal optimism on Irv Smith, I guess. I think he's not worth anything. Yeah, does anyone think he? this is like, a, oh, I'm going to purchase him as my, you know, he's not going to be a wastelander tight end move? <laughs> no, he's a wastelander. Wastelander. <laughs> At best, he's going to be exactly what uh, Hayden Hurst and every other Bengals yeah. tight end has been, where he has a few nice games, but overall, he's going to be... They're automatically man. knocked to, like, the fourth option on this. this team. Yeah, just because of all, you know, with these receivers on this team, it's it's good luck. Yeah. All right. Hey, hold on uh, a second. Hold on yeah, a second. Yes, Frank? Hold on a second. I don't know, dude. I do. <laughs> but what? What don't you know? I, I'm the thing is I'm not gonna pay whatever the overprice is for Irv Smith right now because the Bengals can go out here and draft a fucking tight end. Mm -hmm. But, dude, if I if everyone thinks he sucks and everyone's saying sell, 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 and I could pick him up for less than a third, I could throw out a fourth and get him. I'll fucking throw a fourth for Irv Smith. I'm the biggest oh Irv Smith denier of all time. And now <laughs> it's like I can get him for nothing and he might be a starting tight end. This team was, they had fucking, what was his name? Like Steve Irwin playing well a couple games. Like is Steve yeah, a couple Irwin games. can play well. Like why why can't Irv Smith maybe just figure it out? Year five, at I, dude, I've seen crazier shit with tight ends. Sometimes it takes like nine years for these dudes to break out. He's also still only 24, 25. He's super young still. I'll do it for the fourth. Fuck it. Give me Irv Smith for the fourth. I don't mind that okay. I have him. I'm not going to trade him if, if I have him, but I think, you know. Yeah. I just don't really want him on my roster. Uh, I, th I, I mean, I think he's obviously worth the roster spot, but in yeah, terms of. But am I going out and trading for him now? <laughs> um, now can we move on? Yeah. Sure. Off the off the Earth Smith talk. Josh yeah. Downs apparently had a great workout for um what was it? His pro day, right? Yeah. Yeah. I saw his three cone was just incredible. And that's really not shocking from a guy like Josh Downs. But uh I think this just confirms that he's gonna be probably a day two pick and an early second round pick in in, in, in dynasty rookie drafts coming up this summer. I think I think for sure day two pick. I think the thing that stuck out with me just because of their track record was apparently the Pittsburgh Steelers reps that were there were a big fan of his pro day. And I'm like, if I know like any team is good at like scouting receivers, it's Pittsburgh. Uh, they somehow just do it constantly, uh, like every single year. Uh, so I think if you that, look that at the, the Pittsburgh receivers they've drafted over the years, it is wild. It's insane. Like even like going, going back to like the Mike like Wallace, Emmanuel yeah. Sanders, Mike Wallace, and Emmanuel Sanders, okay, Antonio I will, Brown. I will say one thing. Like <laughs> I, those guys were hits, and I think Deont that Dickens, Deontay. Deontay hits. Like yes, there is a super high hit rate. I also believe that the Martavis Bryant's and and th those types of dudes, Ben Roethlisberger may look good because Ben Roethlisberger made some like. They those receivers left, you know, like our third receiver some years would leave and like out of the league two years later. A guy that like put up 600 yards all of a sudden out of the league. You know, I, I think that the Steelers part of it is that the organization's been good and good players look good on good teams. I, yeah, I think the Steelers are overrated in terms of drafting wide receivers. I think they just do it more I don't than. Know. I mean, all right, you ready? Let's go through back through their history. We'll Pickens do it real quick. was like a no-brainer, yeah. dude. Yeah, Pickens George was a no-brainer. Last last year was George Pickens and Calvin Austin. Yet to be seen on Calvin Austin. 
Uh, the previous year, no wide receivers. The year before that, Chase Claypool looked like a That's hit a for the first year. That's still a hit. What, what round did they pick him for in? A second. Yeah, it's still so, a hit. He, no, it's not. He, you he don't want second, Claypool. He was He's a second-round pick, and they traded him for a second-round pick, which was essentially a first-round pick. But they traded him for a very similar draft capital. Deontay Johnson in the third in 2019. That's a hit. Major hit. James Washington in the second. Big L. Um, yeah. Juju Smith Schuster, Juju Smith Schuster in the second. That's hit. a good pick. Yeah, that's it was, good that pick. was a hit when he, he had like a fifteen or fourteen hundred yard season there. Demarcus Ayers in the seventh in twenty sixteen doesn't really in matter. Seventh. Sammy Coates in the third. Sammy oh, Coates. Sammy Coates was awful. <laughs> <laughs> now th- this is I don't know if you want to consider Dre Archer, but they have him as wide receiver or slash yeah, running back. He was uh, Dree, yeah, Dre Archer, dude. You talk about a guy that had a nasty preseason, and he was the reason why I will never, ever, ever, ever trust preseason <laughs> again. This dude, every preseason game was taking shit to the house. It was like Boom, 80-yard touchdown. Boom, 85-yard kick return touchdown. Everyone's like, holy shit, Dre Archer, we have a weapon. The next Devin Hester was garbage, was mm-hmm. awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Martavis Bryant in the fourth that year. L. No, uh, Martavis no, Bryant was good. Yeah, he, he had, had one good year. year. He, he had like, one I, good year. For a fourth rounder. He'd still be in the right, league fourth if he was for... Some other well, we traded really his ass to the, the to the Raiders. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, that didn't help his problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, Marcus Wheaton in the third, the following year. Yeah, that oh. was an L. <laughs> not a Pujo. Yeah, that was an L. Yeah, Marcus but, Wheaton was yeah. not good. T- Tony Clemens in the seventh, the following year, irrelevant. I mean, 2011, no one drafted, and I'll just stop with 2010, where they did get Emmanuel Sanders in the third. Um, yeah. and Antonio Definitely. Brown in the sixth. Yeah, that that was a yeah. crazy draft. Two guys. Yeah. But like, we're hyping up. Hey, uh, we'll go back another year so they could get another win for them. Mike Wallace in the third. Yeah, but like, it's nothing crazy. Like, like they they've had some good yeah. hits. They they they've hit on players that typically well, shouldn't be good. But it's they've also crazy missed on because players. of AB in the six. Just yeah, that's an all time smash. And I don't exactly. know. It's pretty darn good. It's like saying the Patriots are good drafting quarterbacks and they just got tom brady in that one draft and then <laughs> trade away all their other quarterbacks i, I don't know I, all right but josh downs let's actually get into josh downs um yeah, let's he, wait what's the good. time stamp you got here 20 let's let's update the time stamp for this as well okay um right, josh downs <laughs> so the thing i hate about this is that i am starting to really like josh downs but now that the cat's out of the bag i yeah. think that there's a decent chance he can go where what like elijah moore went what was that like pick 34 36 somewhere around there like right at the turn of the first round potentially very late first round and i think that's gonna juice his price i i think with what we've seen from free agency where juju smith schuster dj chark like uh what's his name jacoby myers they're the best wide receivers from free agency i think we're gonna see a lot of wide receivers go in, in the first round this year. I mean, that's um, just been typical mm-hmm. of the past few years, and I don't think it's going to change. I yeah. think everyone's seeing how these, you know, receivers can really affect the, an offense, and and they're really putting a value on it, and that's why you're seeing these guys get, you know, $20 million a year in contracts between A.J. Brown, Tyreek Hill, all these other guys that are, you know, Jamar Chase is going to come up, T. Higgins is going to come up. Like, all these guys are going to be making large contracts. And and the league is just putting an emphasis on these what this wide receiver position. So I do think we're going to see a whole lot of receivers. We saw f- what five in the first round last year. And uh, let me do NFL wide receivers by draft. I mean, we saw Wilson, uh, Olave, Jameson Williams, uh, Dotson, Drake London. Drake London. I think that was it. Dotson and Drake London. Oh, and Traylon Burks. We had six in the first round last year. So, like, I wouldn't be shocked to see, like, five this year. You think five in the first round? Listen, I well, think we, just, no one, I think no one thought see. Dotson was going to go in the first round last no, year, and he was picked I, 16. Yeah, I think we're going to see a ton in the second. I just don't in the first. I, I think this year you're definitely going to see Quinn Johnson. You're going to definitely see JSN. We know those top three. Yeah, we know those top three. Addison probably as well. Um, yeah. 
Who's then who going Zay Flowers and Jalen Hyatt both seem like they're probably going to be first rounders at this yep. point. So now you throw Josh, Josh Downs down, in there, you got six. Okay, well, real, real quick, I'll, I'll just set a line. Uh, over under four and a half receivers taken in the first round. Over. Over. What about you, Frank? No, Frank's on mute. Sorry, I was responding to Parker in the chat. What was the question? Uh, over under four and a half receivers taken in the first round. Mm. JT and Jake both had easy overs. I don't think it's an easy over. I don't think because I'm considering easy well, you're easy. You're I'm easily going to get three. Three. You're easily Are we counting three. pick thirty-two with the Steelers? Oh, I because it is there's one left. No, yeah. <laughs> sure. Because uh, because I'm, I'm also thinking like I'm not counting tight ends in that because I think there will be. A tight end or two also draft in the first. I, I think one of the tough things, I was talking to Parker about this, I just think that this draft class in the first round is better than last year. There's just more players to choose from. Especially because we got like four quarterbacks. Whereas last year, I mean, we, we kind of just saw like looking backwards that teams did not value those quarterbacks. Potentially five quarterbacks. I don't know if you saw Tannenbaum. Um Put out a mock draft on ESPN. They had Hendon Hooker going in the top ten. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> oh, man, I love Hendon Hooker. It's just like I, I don't know. This is the classic. Let's Isn't he throw like in 30? the last guy. Yeah, he's Hooker like twenty six. Yeah, old. Dude, that I offense was was not like anything that the teams in the league run. I mean, like there's some concepts that kind of care, but dude, like he's not. That is like the. He's not. not not what's gonna happen in the league. It's gonna be no. crazy. It'll be a day two pick. He's not going in the first. The past three years, we've had at least five wide receivers go in the first. And it's gonna. I don't. I don't see it changing. So like, I just think these receiver values are up, and it's just gonna help guys like Josh Downs in the first place. Like that's just common sense here. If he's gonna go in that picks, you know, thirty. 33 through 36 38 whatever it is that top of the second round like he's gonna be a top rookie pick i wouldn't be shocked to see him go in the 110 range come the end of the day if he gets a good landing spot like if he because, yeah, yeah. Good, if he goes to the chiefs like everyone's well, gonna be all over does. that again like if he goes to the bills everyone's gonna be all over that like there's just even if he goes to the Chargers at 25 or something like or 20 whatever 24 whatever they have done there, um, people right. are gonna love that. Like there's just so many things that like, like I wouldn't be shocked. And then if even if he goes in the top of the second round to a team, uh, who's at the top like the Lions or something like that, at the top of the second round, like people are gonna like that. I know they have Jameson Williams, but like, and Amon Ra, but like they're still going to like it. Like there's just a lot of different, a lot of different scenarios where I just see Josh Downs value going up in rookie drafts from now until rookie drafts start to go on. I think Jalen Hyatt as well. We're going to see that when. Yes, he, exactly. He's know. another guy. Yep. Cause I, I, there's, I just think if I'm an NFL team, 1000%, I'm valuing both Downs and Hyatt in the top 40 picks. Right. And right now it's, I feel like Hyatt is just being, valued as like a mid-second i'm seeing in so many mocks guys like i think know, people are overreacting to his 40 time so i think everyone expected him to be super fast and they're like oh only a 441 i'm just like yeah but when you watch his tape like you see the speed pop off i don't know i just see some of these fucking wacky running backs going super high in these drafts like guys that, I agree with you on that like they could go outside of the first hundred picks and we're taking receivers that put up 1500 yards and are going to be top 40 picks behind them. Yeah. Yeah. It's been crazy. <laughs> Frank Hendon hookers, the next Kellen Mond. Yeah. I, the That's thing is, saying. is that you also have the check that I, for whatever reason, like him a lot for <laughs> <laughs> so, like because oh, geez, of the stars are aligning. <laughs> <laughs> all right but it sounds like josh downs Stock if he's not a first round up. pick yeah he's gonna be in the second uh yeah what, what wide receiver would you guys have him ranked in, in your draft your, mm. i think my wide receiver four right now four okay that's pretty high Somewhere nah, around yeah. there 
Because to be honest, I think I'd rather have Downs over Zay Flowers. And like, I don't really I care you, if what? that's... I don't really care because I'm going to position myself in drafts to where I just get the last one probably out of him, Downs, and Flowers. I'm going to be the guy. I don't give a shit. You can have your run. You can, you can have your pick. I'd prefer Downs over all of them, but I don't care which one I end up with. I still like Marvin Mims in that conversation. Oh, sh- stop. I still do. I like, like Marvin Mims. Stop. Not on. I like him in that conversation. Um, Same guy that liked Terrace Marshall at 106. Hey. Well, if you like Marvin Mims, it, not play style wise, but draft wise, you could probably just snag. Like, I know a lot of people that were snagging Amon Raz in like that mid early second part, not the early second, but like those 204, 205s. Yeah. And it's not hard mm-hmm. to get into those picks. There's a huge yeah. value difference between 204, 205, and 201. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if I were to put Josh Downs, he's probably my five. I think he's five. Five, yeah. five? Yeah. I think he sounds like five. Hit, hit my you know, my philosophy hit running backs over wide receivers in second round. I, I think one of the things I disagree with people though is that this is pre NFL draft. Like, okay, if you have a stipulation in a mock draft where you're like, oh, we're assuming draft capital, like, okay, fine, whatever. Um, but I I don't know. I operate like, yo, I'm drafting right now. Cause I mean, there's plenty of leagues that do startups before the NFL draft. Like you think I'm touching like, even guy like I like Kendra Miller. You think I'm touching Kendra Miller, Zach Evans, those types of dudes over 1500 yard receivers? Fuck no. Fuck no. No, I'm with you. Like, even if they do hit, I still probably <laughs> am not drafting them over those guys. Like, even if they do go in the second. Mm-hmm. All right. Juicy topic here, though. Lamar Jackson demands a trade. And I tweet um, out shameless plug at Dynasty JT. Um that I fundamentally don't understand why there are teams that like the, the commanders and the it's made zero are like, hey, it's we don't we, yeah, we're we're not going after Lamar. Because even if you're not, which maybe they're big braining me and they actually are, but even if they aren't going after Lamar Jackson, right? I would say I am. I would get the teams in my division like worried about me going after Lamar. Like the, the Panthers and like the Saints and like the Bucks. Those to be teams, honest, there's there's very few teams that shouldn't be going after Lamar Jackson if we're going to be quite honest. Yeah. Like yeah, if you don't have Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, like if you don't have one of those guys, wh- what are you doing? <laughs> like it it sh- it makes it's made zero sense to me. Like, like Ron Rivera being like, no, like, or like the Falcons being like, we're worried about his injury history. Uh, I saw some brought up a good point online, like Deshaun Watson tore the same ACL twice and the Falcons are going hard for him. Uh, and that's ignoring even all the other shit that came with Deshaun Watson. But like the market for him was insane. And then Lamar Jackson, no one's willing to give up two first round picks. So like, it, it's, Parker, it's, if you it's, think you can't put Lamar Jackson in Jalen Hurts position and he wouldn't put up like 2,000 yards on the ground. You're just wrong. <laughs> no, I don't think the Eagles would. I mean, I think Jalen Hurts. They won't, but I'm just saying, I th- yeah. if you put Lamar Jackson in that Jalen Hurts position on the Eagles, he would probably run for like 1,500 yards. I think one thing that we're not considering is that we're assuming that all of these NFL teams are actually operating efficiently and are smart. You know, it's – I'm not really – You're right. We have, that- we have the commanders. They, they don't do anything smart. <laughs> So, you know, we were looking at franchises that have been perennial suckers just for years and years and years and can't figure out how to use some of the most unicorn players to exist in the past 10 or so years. Like, what, am yeah, I expecting them to make the right decision now on, on an even more complex issue? Because let, let's put it into a dynasty angle here, right? A dynasty lens. Let's just, I'm going to use this analogy here, and I think it's going to try and make sense with the NFL too. If Frank, for example, has Patrick Mahomes and he puts Patrick Mahomes on the market and say for whatever reason, I don't want Patrick Mahomes, right? I just don't want to pay the price. I like my team how it is, whatever. But only Jake over here is going after Patrick Mahomes and Frank, for whatever reason, like just can't get it right. Like doesn't want Patrick Mahomes, doesn't believe in Patrick Mahomes, thinks uh, of 
rock is going to fall from the sky and blind him and he's not going to be able to play anymore, whatever. He just doesn't believe in Patrick Mahomes. Well, if Jake and Frank are the only two that are like dealing with each other, Jake has all the leverage. So now you have a team like, say, the Colts, for example, that are looking to buy Patrick Mahomes. So St. Louis is the Colts in this instance. And he's looking to buy. I know what you just did, Frank. And <laughs> Jake is looking. Uh, Lunas, Lunas is just going to go buy Patrick Mahomes or, or whatever. Lunas doesn't. Hold on. Frank threw me off here. We only have one team in the league that's going after Patrick Mahomes, or in this instance, Lamar Jackson. The price for Lamar Jackson is lower. There's no leverage. So now all the other competing teams are just letting that one team get ahead of them because they just paid less for a top-tier quarterback. So I don't understand why the commanders or the Falcons are just letting teams like the Colts or I, I saw the Patriots in the rumors. I don't really know how true that is. Just the Patriots should be. Have, I would 100% do it. Uh, they're, they're just like they're giving up leverage and letting other teams in the NFL get better for free. For free. Even if you don't want him, you might as well just put together some kind of offer and just push the price up. Uh, real quick, yeah. I, I mean, I agree with that. Let, let's, let me just catch up on chat real quick. What's going mm -hmm. on, Peter the R? Wouldn't it be smarter to wait until after the draft to get Lamar and make your trade picks late? Yeah, I think that is potentially part of the issue. I don't really know exactly what's going on. If the Ravens can do a trade that's not the two first thing, I, well, I have no idea. They would Lamar would need to sign the tag, is what it is. They need, he needs to sign the tag and then trade him for whatever. So if all three parties agree on the trade, he could sign the tag, insta trade. Yeah. yeah. And then but now he would does have to Lamar get paid but, twice there? Because that would be the no, ultimate stomp. No, because then <laughs> so he would get paid his. 32 million or whatever it is for the tag and this the year and then he would have to sign an extension for next year and beyond mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah and i'm sure whoever's doing the trade like they already have the contract <clears throat> extension figured out with correct you would you would only do it if you were able to talk to him and at least have a rough idea that you're going to come to an agreement yeah nfl teams are yeah, businesses I, I winning is understand. priority like, number one for them yeah, but oh man, like I, I don't know, like you're not wrong. You're, you're not wrong. It, wait, but you're not. telling me, if you're telling me comment, Lamar most, Jackson isn't filling Washington Stadium and getting people to buy jerseys compared to no, like it is, Sam it Howell, is. But but at the same that. time, like you have to pay. He'd be their best quarterback in like what fifty years? Yes, it's not a question about winning games or even jersey sales. You have you got to remember that like you're paying his salary. This yeah, but this was, to be this was the worst run dollars. organ the worst run organization in the league. This is like the one mired with scandals every year. They're always just getting in trouble for something. Their stadium's literally falling and almost collapsed on Jalen Hurts. And they're about to get sold oh for God. six billion dollars. <laughs> like it's I don't know. I, of, I think it's you're the making location. Much money. It's the location. Yeah, so you're, you're talking pretty, about, so, so you're you're already talking about a football team in the, in the nation's you, capital. Of course it's going to go for that much money. Of so course it is. It. You, you've already got that part figured out. Now yeah. just build a good team and you're doubling. Right. No, but the problem wrong. is, is the owner Eagles... that is currently paying the players I mean, like, is listen, horrible. As an and, Eagles he does it, like... and he knows he's selling the team. So he why is – why if I'm Dan Snyder, why am I going to cough up the – 60 million dollars in guaranteed money when i know i'm gonna sell a team yeah I, I, that. that makes sense from like that perspective i agree but i don't understand what the falcons and some of these other teams makes unless they're just point. doing the ultimate spin zone because i agree like with peter r wouldn't it be smarter to wait but like i don't see unless you're doing a smoke screen why you would be like yeah you know we're the falcons like we got desmond ritter we like what we got in-house it's like seriously dude <laughs> Yeah, but like, I mean, yeah, and even teams that really haven't been talked about, like, like for example, the Raiders went out and paid Jimmy G. All right, I, I hate this topic. We got to move on. I, I hate all this. Right. I hate this. Right. It, 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 the entire situation has made zero sense to me. Because like it, things will make more sense once we see the offseason unfold. If the Falcons roll out freaking Desmond Ritter to start, I'm going to be like, you guys are idiots. If they make a trade with the Cardinals, for example, and go get a quarterback, it's like, okay, well now it makes sense. They trade it off I'm, right like, that, but yeah I, I don't know the whole situation is fucking weird i think the colts seem like the front runner i guess besides baltimore but i don't know all right uh frank's guy kaj spears has a 7.43 relative athletic score 
Yeah, I don't really know if this is a news topic or not. I just kind of wanted to bring up Ty J Spears because I just think he's a really fascinating player right now um, in rookie drafts, especially if you're doing these startup drafts pre NFL draft. Um, really interesting player. So like relative athletic score speaking, I think it was kind of a disappointment from what we ever had kind of seen on film, especially this three cone being really subpar for someone whose cutting ability on tape is like absolutely phenomenal. So I kind of just wanted to have the conversation like in your guys' opinion, because I honestly don't think this changes my value of Ty J Spears all that much. A, like, what do you guys think of him? And B, does this relative athletic score, is this going to change your value of what you may have previously had or, oh, I'm going to take this guy over him now? Jake, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, what I was saying, I don't really think it changes anything value-wise. I mean, like, Tajay Spears was always going to be a guy that was going to be probably right a mid-second round pick in Dynasty drafts. And I don't I think really right now think... he's early third. Yeah, I don't think right. that so, high. Right, yeah. so even improves my point. So, like, at that point, you're taking guys in drafts that you like, and if you like Tajay Spears before, you're going to like him now. This isn't going to change your mind. Um, I mean, you still see the explosiveness, right, in the vertical and the broad jump. He still has that. His his forty was fine at a four five. Like, yeah, the three cone was disappointing, and you, you you just doesn't quite make sense. Like you said, when you watch this guy on film, he cuts like an animal, and you'd figure he'd have a great three cone. But whatever, the small size is another thing that's dragging this relative athletic score down. And even with that, he's still at a seven four. Like. It's not like he's down at a under a five or anything like that. He still has a solid score. So realistically, I, I don't think this changes anything. <laughs> I was just reading up Flowers is my wide receiver too. Frank is losing his mind. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who said oh that? Joe, I love that. Hey, um, yes, Joe. We love Zay Flowers here. I don't know. Is he making fun of you for saying that you're, he's your wide receiver too, or is he also on the Zay Flowers wide receiver too? I think he's Bang. on the Zay Flowers band. Oh, all right. I don't mind Zay Flowers. All right, but uh, back to Ty J Spears. I think that's how you say his name. Um, I think he's just a day three pick is my problem in the NFL draft. I don't. Right. I'll believe it when I see it if he gets to the day two draft capital. I mean, grinding the mocks has him projected in the third round. I just, uh, I think that would be a win know. for Ty. That J. would be a big that would be a win, win. for Ty J Spears. I, I, I just the the problem with this grinding the mocks thing because I was going through some of these twenty twenty two. It's just at the end they, of the day, crowdsourced fan hyped. data. It, yeah. All these offensive players, because their name brand get get a little bit too high in these mocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think he's probably solidly in the fourth, maybe in the fifth, from how I feel about Ty J Spears and. At that point, I'm just kind of out of the wait and see and kind of judge the field comparatively where they got drafted, when they got drafted to to Spears because I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other as to whether or not I want him on my team. I do. The the big issue I have is that he's just a small running back. And if -hmm. there's anything that you'll ever see in, in the dynasty community, it's we we dynasty players love to pre NFL draft overhype the shit out of a lot of these really lightweight running backs. Um, and listen, everyone falls victim to it because they look great in college. I mean, fuck, I might be doing it with Devin a chain right now. Who knows? And Ty J Spears, but yeah, Ty J Spears, the, the, this relative athletic score, it's annoying because like like Joe saying in the chat, if tape tape through proof testing, maybe he just didn't perfect the drill. I'm gonna give him that excuse right now, but like if I'm drafting in in these pre NFL draft startup drafts, right now I might just be avoiding him, given the price tag. It's not like years ago where Khalil Herbert, I really didn't give a shit because he was so cheap. Or, or like Brian Robinson, even where it's like I really don't give a crap because I mean they're probably around the same price, but I no yeah, way. Brian Robinson, yeah, Brian, Robinson, Brian Robinson was about that early third, yeah. 
I forgot where he yeah. was going before the NFL draft, though, because I think before the NFL draft, he was kind of Lower, pretty darn yeah. low. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about him. We can move on. Okay, this is the one that I want to talk about. Oh, um, God. Andy Reid expects... Well, I'm going to have a different take from what I think you expect. Andy Reid expects Sky Moore to step up in wake of Juju plus Miko departures. Um, yeah, this is exactly what I said during the regular season, where I was like, you guys were panicking about Sky Moore, and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want him on my team right now, blah, blah, blah. Kadarius told me better, blah, blah, blah. It was just not the time to sell Sky Moore, because you knew this was going to happen. You knew these guys were going to leave... Uh, this this hype was going to buzz. So I just looked on Keep Trade Cut, and he's ranked exactly where he was before he had this, like, he had the big dip originally, and people were worried about him, but then he had an even bigger dip. So he's back to his first original dip price, um, which I think is fine. Like, it's Sky Moore's wide receiver 52. I'm going to try and pull up, like, comparatively what that, that equates to. What's Tony at? Um, I'll check in a second. I'm always ranked around the likes of a Desmond Ritter, Juju Smith-Schuster, so I'm going to guess that's a late second. Tony's at wide receiver 43. Yeah, okay. Sky Moore is like a 208 in the, in this draft. And Tony is worth, what did you say, Jake, a 203? Uh, he's a wide receiver oh, 43, 43, 43. 43, so I don't know what yeah, But he's more worth. like a 20, 205, it looks like. I was going to say probably 205. Okay. Before two hundred five, um, uh, <clears throat> do you want to go JT or I was going? Oh, I'll take it if the floor is open because I didn't I need see to put this on the screen until on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I it fucked up. Um, <laughs> welcome to the roulette it. wheel of fantasy football that is the Chiefs' offense, because <laughs> your best guess is as good as mine on which of these motherfuckers actually is good, and and you can put in your lineup right. Are you going to put it on the red 32 that's the Sky Moore? Are we going on black 17, my favorite roulette <laughs> number that's a uh, Carderis Tony? Is it is it just fucking a green, which is a, a new draft pick? Who fucking knows? But the fact no, that there is, is that whatever guy you like, and you if you have reason to believe that this guy is not, oh, he... He's on the Chiefs. He, the production has to go somewhere. No, this guy's like actually good at football. You should be loading your chips onto the roulette wheel. Because if you, if, like, if you think Corderas Tony is nasty and is going to be a fantastic player in the league, this is a dude that in a month can turn his value from what? What's Carderas Tony you said? Like 205? Five, 204, 205. 205. 205, he could be worth a first plus within a month of football. This guy puts up back-to-back -back games with... 80 yards and a touchdown, boom, he's worth a first. Yeah. Same thing with Sky Moore. Same thing with fucking Valdez Scantling. Right? He's like, not on, is he on the team still? Whoever the uh, fuck is there. Whoever uh, it is, put it on the wheel. I have no idea. I, I don't think anyone has any idea. Other than Travis Kelsey. That's the only given. <laughs> yeah. I will ask you guys, like, who do you is more confident has a better season next year between Sky Moore or Tony? I like Tony. I'm I'm fans I'm of gonna both. Go Tony, I'm gonna go Tony. If they're both healthy, I'll say Tony. But you value Sky more oh, higher than Dynasty. Player. You wanna know why I I think you have to pick Tony? Yeah. It's because you know, when like with first round draft pick receivers, um, when you look at it like if they ever break out, almost half the time it's in their first season. And then like, you know, the next like twenty eight percent the second season and at that point, it's like you're kind of an outlier. If you are a first round pick, you suck your first two years, or you're not a top 24 your your first two years that you're ever going to break out, right? Carderis Tony, though, has always been the wacky first round pick. His entire career has been wacky. If there's anyone that is going to break that trend and be an outlier, to me, it's fucking Carderis Tony. The guy's been an outlier every fucking year. I think the big thing is like with him, when you watch him certain plays, when he is healthy and has the ball in his hands, like he pops off the screen. I just, the, my, the biggest concern and it hasn't changed for me has just been like, can he stay healthy? And that's the one thing that is in Sky Moore's favor. Cause I think if, if you told me Tony was going to stay healthy and everyone knew that, I think he would be ranked way higher than wide receiver 43. 
Uh, if Tony is a head case, I don't trust him, says Joe. Yeah, I'm kind of in a similar. He's he's just a. I don't know if you've seen him in interviews or anything. He's a he's weird, a weird personality. <laughs> but I mean, I, I like if if he's on the field playing, I don't. Be yeah, but don't weird. all the good wide receivers have fucking weird personalities? Yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, they're... Wide receivers, <laughs> receivers that also one position where you could probably get away with that the most. Yeah, but I, I mean, feel like I at... want my receiver to be wacky as shit. Like, sweet, we gotta <laughs> no, get one. No, like... you don't. You just got rid of one. You got rid of Juju. <laughs> Yeah, all you Steeler fans are like, oh, he's doing all the TikTok boy. We I love boys. Juju, all right? I don't want to hear <laughs> right, it. If he came most, back I'm generalizing your fan base. Open arms. <laughs> I'm generalizing your do, fan do base. Do you remember, like, that people. meme tweet? It was, like, it was like, uh, like the QB, whatever, running back. Yeah, like Denny State Carter running. tweeted it out. No, what was the receiver one? It was, like, the enemy stays close and holds a knife or something. Yeah, I'll see. And then AJ, AJ Brown, like, actually tweeted it. Uh, uh, I assume Frank's going to get a Juju jersey. Oh, that'd be funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, think uh, I am a fan is, of yeah. both Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony at their prices, um, considering how low each are. Uh, I, I lean Tony, uh, if I had to pick just because I think he's the better talent. But the injuries, like, if you want to tell me you pick Sky Moore long term because of Tony's injury history, I'd understand. Um, <laughs> He's old, at the end of the day, he has to stay healthy. Th- like, this seen this so was a tweet, Lunas. Typical yeah. quarterback tweet, love my teammate. God is good. Running back tweet, keep grinding. Tight end tweet, derp. Wire receiver tweet, the enemy speaks kindly and holds a knife. <laughs> yeah, then A.J. Brown actually tweeted that. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is so funny. <laughs> I was going to go pull up my Juju jersey, but I don't know where the hell it is. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, fraud. You probably burnt it. <laughs> no, dude. I... <laughs> I miss Juju. I want Juju oh. back. I don't care about the TikToks. Uh, oh, okay, so no, on a serious note, back to serious note. Are you guys like heavily investing in any of these players right now? Nope. I think this team drafts a wide receiver. Just like looking at yeah. that wide receiver room. They have to. They need, I'm, they need to I'm make waiting, a move. I'm waiting for I wouldn't Africa. be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked to see him go after a vet wide receiver. I know they probably don't have the but who's cap like base. on the market. Like uh, who can they even DeAndre Hopkins? I I I don't think they have the cap for Hopkins, but I do think that would be a sick fit. No, that other than awesome. DeAndre Hopkins, I don't know who else is on like, the market. I mean, I guess move. there's Odell, but there's been zero rumors between the Chiefs and Odell. Uh, he's been linked to other teams. Like, like the Frank's Ravens. like, let's just spin the yeah. wheel of all so, free agents and see so, who lands on the Chiefs. So we're going on green, is what I'm hearing. Gr- the gr- <laughs> for draft picks. <laughs> yeah. Because, listen, I, I, I feel like I have random shares of these Chiefs receivers, not Sky Moore, random Tonys. I don't even know where these came from. And it's like, what do I do? <laughs> do would I you rather have Tony? Time? Would you rather? Would you rather have Tony or two hundred five right now, Frank? Like I honestly you, have no fucking idea. I, I don't <laughs> like, know. I, I don't know. I think I, I would know. give the edge to Tony. Uh, I'll take I I just know like when you present the two oh five, who's there? I'm gonna be at least right now yeah. while everyone's shiny and good and no one has any knocks. It's like no landing spots. It's like sweet two oh five, amazing. Yeah, future Kansas City Chief Marvin Mims at two oh five. I'll take that. Thank you. Marvin Mims. I mean, no, if he did go to the Chiefs, though, he would. He wouldn't be 205 at that point if he did. Uh, All right. I think that's it for our news and notes, though. Well, should I sell Tony, though? What do I do with with my Tony? Do I sell him? I I would hold. I would hold. I would try and package him for a higher. I'd either do Tony in a second for. Let me see. Let me let me get in the lab here real quick. See if I could cook something up. Say you have Tony and you have, I don't know, 208, 207, because I accidentally typed in 7 instead of 8. Um, all right, that's just not realistic. But you want, you want me to give you what I've got, um, yeah. graphic wise? I've got 202, 102, 302. I, yeah, yeah, this is a tanker right here. I've got Tony on the taxi, which is Tony sweet. And, Tony in 302. We'll try that. Um, do I want like a? I mean, this says Tony and two o two gets you Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I didn't really believe that. Um, 
that that definitely is not getting you Jalen Waddle. I'm looking yeah. in like the 4500s, looking for. I trade Tony and uh, a third for Michael Pittman. I think you might be able to get that done. Tony in 302. It's not bad. But the, this team has a bunch of like a bunch of random players, so I could make some trades happen. Like I've got like Deontay Sutton, Dalvin Cook, James Connor. I I, um, I hate the 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 Dalvin hate. This man just put up 15 yards, 1500 yards and 11 touchdowns and people are like shitting on him. I just like I I think keep trade cuts trade calculator is getting kind of screwy recently because like I don't think Tony in a third gets you Quinn Johnston. Yeah, they have a big problem with the than... two for one trades. The two for one trades are really not good. Yeah. Unless unless one of the assets in the two for yeah, well, one of the assets in the two for one has to just be like clearly undervalued, right? It has to be like maybe like a Ryan Tannehill. Then it kind of works. Mm-hmm. At least in my opinion, clearly undervalued. Um, like, like it's good for like a lot of those dudes, like the lower end trades where it's like, oh, this and a third for a guy is worth a second. I think it works for that. But for like. Oh, two second roundy kind of guys, or like a second and a third gets you like a legitimately nasty player. Like, dude, th- those are never happening. Oh, I mean, this is I one think... I definitely do. What's hold on? Let me just make sure. I would trade Tony plus whatever small thing you have to put on top because I can't imagine it's actually that that big. But I'd move Tony into Deontay Johnson. Well, I fucking have Deontay in that league. <laughs> well, <laughs> trade him and then trade Tony to get him back. Um, <laughs> that's why what? My, I, what what happened? Sell Tony. I was thinking about it. I don't know. Did, I, did I, Becky I, Hammond just get fucking uh, elected to the Hall of Fame? She hasn't even been a head coach. Oh, NBA. T- this kid's bringing NBA talk into a dynasty football. Even <laughs> just 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 weird. Um, all right, let's get into price to move from 106 to 101 in rookie draft. Yeah, and this is something that I was looking to do because this is a real scenario that I have. And um, I think this kind of falls victim to these two for one trades and keep trade cut are just kind of a little wonky because it says, you know, 106 in Deontay is fair for 101. And I don't think any of us are trading the 101 for 106 and Deontay. Yes, so remind my... me. I'm going to do it right now on the pod. I'm going to put 102 in the second, third, and 20 league. So if you're listening, I'm putting 101 on the block. Or he's putting 101 on the block. See, I don't know, but dude, like, I, if it, mm, what, I hate 106. 106, I just don't like as a pick. If it was 105, I think I would definitely. I mean, Consider listen, that. it's realistically shaping up to be at least Bijan for Jameer Gibbs and Deontay Johnson. And I really don't think that that's that far. I mean, maybe it's because I really like Deontay. And if you like if I had 101 and you threw in like a mid second, like a 204, 205, like I would start thinking. Well, it's have- funny. It's funny you say that because I do have 206. So I could do 106. 206 Deontay Johnson for 101 and I don't know I just I, I'm not confident enough in, in Gibbs if I if I was more confident in Gibbs I would be smash ahead like I just what, what, need to see everything to pan out for Gibbs what if I told you that player is JSN or Addison are you more into that I mean it probably <laughs> will be at least Addison I think I think in that scenario you would kind of have to hope that someone's in love with one of um, it could be, I mean, it could be Gibbs or like if someone is in love with like Anthony Richardson, because I think, I mean, this is assuming, no, I mean, this is assuming the first five picks are Bijan, Bryce, uh, Stroud, Richardson, and uh, Richardson, and then uh, JSN. So that would leave you with Addison or Gibbs. At six, yeah, or Quentin I, I, Johnston, or Zay Flowers, or whoever the fuck you want to put there. Isley, I don't know if you just joined, but yeah, uh, we're talking about the one hundred and one. So I said, 
hey, might as well just put it on the trade block now because I don't really plan on drafting at 101. Um, well, the, so other, like, the other question I would have, though, is what does it take me to go from 106 back up to, like, 102, 103, whatever? Right, but, I mean, that's the point here is, like, I think to get to 102, 103, you're still looking at 106 and Deontay Johnson just because that's going to be the quarterback spots here. And people are going to put a premium on those picks two and picks three because they're quarterback picks. And then it's just, you know, no one's going to trade a quarterback for Deontay Johnson and Jameer Gibbs or Deontay Johnson and, and Jordan Addison at this point in their career. Sorry. Cause we don't know what they are. It's just assuming, you know, prospect grades and scouting and whatever you're going to, say in like draft capital but you don't know what they are in the nfl at the end of the day so to say that you're going to trade like i understand you're getting a very you know accomplished established player in, in deontay but you're just like that's why the issue comes into play here is because it's a draft pick at the end of the day you don't know what you're getting so i still think the price is very similar to moving to 101 honestly Oh man, like I just I, I really like the idea of getting two startable players and more. The other question that I have is, and I would love to keep 206 just because I think it gives me a lot of flexibility. I mean, I have guys like Nico Collins and 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 you know deandre hopkins i could throw that in there see if he's interested in that like you know there's some I, some there's some some pieces there is nico collins worth like a I don't, I don't even know what the nico collins market looks like at this point but um if he's worth like around the equivalent of a 206 i just move off nico collins instead or at least try i mean to. yeah i would I definitely think nico try collins to. is probably if i'm selling him i am gonna mass off route nico collins in a third for a second i, I yeah, think he's, he's one of those he's not that, worth 206 he's I, I think he's one of those dudes that you have to throw a little bit of a bone to get what you want yeah, he's either a very late second or an early third. And um, and he's one of those dudes that you're going to have to eat a lot of insta-rejected trades before you're able to move him. <laughs> you just need you need one of those vacated target truthers that's like this they're going to I mean, you can make an easy case for him. I'm not going to buy into it, but you can make an easy case for Nico Collins in that the Texans are probably going to get Bryce Young or CJ Stroud right. or whoever that second yep. quarterback is. There's not a lot of weapons on this team. Who's Bryce they Young? They just traded away Brandon Cooks. To? Yeah. Who knows what the deal is with John Mechie? Like, you know, it's a very easy way of just. Right. You could build me, a case for. for and you could build a case. And I like. <clears throat> on top of the other players in the trade, I think it would at least be interesting. I mean, I think the guy would at the end of the day will prefer a 206, but. You know, it's just one of those things where moving from a guy in Jameer Gibbs where you're like not 100% sold, or even if you're going to go in with Addison here at six and, and, and you like Addison, I think he's a great prospect. But like to move up to get a Bijan, that's a, that's a big move. And I don't know what, like, I don't necessarily think Keep Trade Cut is accurately pricing. That no, it's price. definitely not. It's definitely not. No. Yeah. Like, yeah, we all agree that the price is more than that. I, but how I think, more? I think. Deontay plus 206 plus 106 is close. Like maybe not everyone does it, but I think you're you're in the yeah, conversation. Yeah, you're definitely close, there. yeah. Because like I was thinking if I'm a contender and I – like this is how I was thinking about the, the, the ordeal. I'm a contender. I have 101, um, or at least I'm trying to become a contender, right? I can move to 106 – pick up that receiver so I'm still getting a good prospect long-term, yada, 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 right? Wh whoever my wide receiver two is most likely. Or Gibbs. And I can pick up D-Hop and Deontay Johnson to really flesh out my roster. Like that trade, because at 206, it's like, okay, I could take 206. I'd probably, if it were me, rather get another contending piece that I can play in my lineup. Boom, I'm making the turn this year. What up? I'm here, <laughs> right? Like, if we're assuming yeah. that the guy who has 101 is like bad ish team. 
Yeah. You would assume the guy with 101 is pretty bad. Um, I mean, I so this is our home league you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, I know that you don't like Watson all that much. It's like you could, it, if you offered Watson Deontay 106, that gets done. Yeah, 100%. but I think that's too. And you I just might think even be able to get a smidge back. You might be able to get like that early third or whatever back, so you could take a swing. Yeah, on running I, back. I just, I just think it's overkill. That that's an overkill trade to me. I mean, that's giving away two, two, one, you know, super young wide receiver, one receiver in a prime, and then a realistically another high end rookie wide receiver. That's three high end receivers you're giving up for a running back is a lot. I would be more willing to do with a D hop, a guy who's on the back. Yeah, end, not but... just any running back though. He is the RB one, Mister yeah. Uno, and I think he's in a tier of his own right now, at least I mean, in my opinion. Probably, <laughs> probably. But my other my my follow up to this is if mm. you're able to pull it off, because my home league team needs a quarterback here, as I have Tua, Mister. I can't fall down without getting a concussion. And uh, let's ride Russ. Um, <laughs> the funniest uh, quarterback duo. <laughs> yeah, wild quarterback duo. Uh, and my quarterback three right now is Jacoby Brissett. So not too hot on that one. So if I was able to pull off a deal for 101 here, trading back to 103 from 101 and trying to recoup some value and realistically end up with Stroud or Young, whoever is sitting on the board. I think that's really dependent on no, one, whoever has 103, they would have to really want running back, which I think is very I was gonna say I think the, I think the move would just be to trade from 106 to 103. If you're right, but the way. thing is that the price is so similar at that point anyway. That's the issue well, I if, have. If with you're it. doing if you're doing this move for a quarterback at the end of the day and not just the best player, if you wanted just the RB1 to add and win. Um, I would just look to upgrade one of your quarterbacks instead. I would try to offer two a plus or Russ plus into the chunk or like, I mean, yeah, you could do this move, but then you have like four quarterbacks. You could sell, you could sell stuff. You could sell a Tua or a Russ or a Jacoby Brissett to add to the package that you offer. Like two, if you're two just a- going for a quarterback, you have more options than than just oh I have to trade for one oh like I mean there's a lot of different options and I'm just throwing around a bunch of different ideas here but I mean I could always just you know go grab a Kirk Cousins right I could always grab a he's always gonna you know what you're getting with Kirk Cousins he's not a question mark at all he's gonna finish about QB 12 to 14 and you're gonna be happy right but you know you got these I have these two guys that I have no idea what I'm getting right two of the two. biggest question marks at quarterback in the whole league so <laughs> two, two, two a plus a 101 could probably get you most quarterbacks <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it does kind of look like you are lying on the floor no Is i'm Jake not lying yeah, on the floor <laughs> when the camera <laughs> hanging above him <laughs> it's a headboard not a fucking floor <laughs> that would be pretty funny <laughs> So you're chilling in bed. Nice. Yeah, you I'm got chilling the in bed tonight. Yeah. Um, I well, I was saying though, I think Tua plus one hundred and one gets you most quarterbacks. I mean, not like Mahomes, but I mean, Tua and one hundred and six, right? What does that get you? Probably most quarterbacks. Um, Tua, yeah, Tua and one hundred and six is a decent pack. I mean, yeah, if you add in and like once again, like if if you're doing. For one of the high end quarterbacks, Tua one oh six, another piece. It's like, dude, you're in you're in the conversation, right? You're in the realm. Yeah. I think obviously it's league person dependent, right? Like if the person's looking to sell their quarterback, they'd be a lot more. Right. But I mean, you know this league, no one's looking to sell quarterbacks. That's the issue here. Yeah, but that's every league, right? Every league, no one's looking to sell quarterbacks until that one random day in mid May, you see the guy go on the trade block. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh shit, what happened last night? Right? Like that shit happens. Um, all right. I want to get into a scenario I'm in in one of my leagues, part me and Parker in one of our co-managed leagues. It's a best ball two tight end dynasty league, super flex. And I will say for the record, I joined two two tight end leagues this offseason just for whatever reason. I don't know, just fucking around. 
not a huge fan of the two tight end. <laughs> I, I I just it's not even that like oh like that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> the thing that sucks about it, I feel like no one knows what the fuck to do with their tight ends. If you have it, like they're just more quarterbacks now in the league. It's like you have a tight end, like you're just not getting rid of it. <laughs> no. I've got Kyle Pitts in one of those leagues. Like you can pry that motherfucker off me when he retires. <laughs> like. <laughs> I, I ain't trading anyone. And that's how everyone is. Like, you just have to overpay for a mid tight end. It sucks. But besides the point, uh, by the way, in that league, our strategy was hilarious. We lost the championship with sucks. Classic. Um, classic we, Frank losing yeah, a championship. Yeah, classic. It's just a lock every fucking year. Um, we hoarded a shit ton of, of terrible tight ends we neglected tight end all throughout the start of draft our roster is disgusting and then we just had an army of trash which was half of our bench just like random backups praying that their one target was a touchdown and it kind of worked like it was actually pretty good we were getting like consistent 10 11 point weeks from our tight ends like dude we had um bad. we had like one or two of the Cowboys, like randos on their like three tight end goal line formation sets. Yeah. Oh, like Panthers, we had their tight ends, mm. like the most random dudes. The Seahawks, big team that just uses random tight ends. Um, besides the point, I want to trade Drake London in that league because yeah. on on path of getting our nasty roster, Pat Fryermuth is going like pick four or five, and we nabbed uh garrett wilson in the fifth drake london the first round first pick of the sixth round Jahan dotson in like the eighth um Devontae smith i think in in the fourth like we just loaded up on a bunch of really good receivers and now i kind of want to trade for trade one of them away right we, we we hit the jackpot on these rookie picks that we took and now like instead of just i mean, we're kind of set no matter what but I was thinking, Drake London, sell him for two firsts, right? Two rando firsts. Is that yeah. worth it when you, you just have a set roster, sell Drake London for two firsts, go invest your second in Brandon Cooks, maybe like just overpay for someone who's going to get 1,000 yards, and then boom, like best ball, we're chilling. I mean, I like it. I mean, you're talking about probably two contender-ish first, right? Mid to late first. And... uh yeah, I mean, I think that's a, so a fair price for, for Drake London at this point. And you don't need him in a best ball, right? You're going to get, you're going to have guys pop up every week. And it's just not something that's really, you don't need it. So if you can take that now, and especially if you replace that with, like you said, a veteran guy that's going to put up a thousand yards like a Brandon Cooks, right? Like that seems like you picked up a lot of value to me. Who, would you trade AJ Brown last year for two first? I mean, that's probably the cost. Drake London is not. Well, AJ what Brown. about like AJ Brown two years ago? I think that's a better question. I'm talking about like before he popped off on the Eagles, but he oh. was still very good. He like he was still I mean, very good on the Titans. Yeah, but I, I feel I year. feel though even before he was on the Eagles, like I remember there was an offseason where he was in the discussion for wide receiver one or two. I think like last last year he was like it was him and CD fighting for wide receiver three. I think consensus was CD, yeah. but there was a, a plenty Justin of Jefferson people that were ahead of him. Yeah, yeah, and they were generally speaking going off the board late second round. Very well, that's where I'm going. Round of startups. Drake London and Garrett Wilson, two of the players that you have on your team, are going to be that kind of player going into next year because they both had above an 80 uh pff receiving grade i think garrett wilson had let me see if i could pull him again garrett wilson had 85.9 drake london had 85.3 pff receiving grade in their in their rookie season and it's just like hits it's hit after hit after hit for wide receivers that have that kind of draft capital and have that receiving grade where it's just i feel so confident in both of them as to what they're going to be they're going to be and I still think it's obviously going to be Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase are probably going to be your one and two, uh, barring anything crazy. But then after that, I think it's a wide open area where I think both those guys are in that conversation. So if you're willing to trade A.J. Brown for two first, which maybe you are, maybe that wide receiver, 
maybe the first are enticing. Maybe you think you could get another one of those players with those first. I just think that's going to be roughly what Drake London is going to be worth a year from now and Garrett Wilson. So I don't know, kind of just a year philosophy thing uh, then on if, if you just want to get out now, if you want to wait. Personally, I would hold a year, at least a year. Yeah, I guess the other question is, can you get to firsts? I mean, Garrett Wilson, I'm, I agree with you. I'm completely sold. I mean, it's, he's just a classic. Like, I mean, I liked him. At, based, a lot of people liked him before the draft. You see what he did for the Jets last year on, especially at the end of the season, a trash offense. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> easy. London, I'm not as sold on, but I, it's not like I don't like Drake London. But the the consensus loves Drake London. I feel like I've never seen anyone utter a bad word about him. And uh, I, I mean, I don't know about a, bad do, word, do you guys do you... just Garrett Wilson and Drake London on the same tier? No, no. Because I, I was going to say I have Garrett Wilson on a higher tier. I mean, yeah, not I'm like by a ton, but he's yeah, he's on a higher tier. JT, you said you have them on the same tier. They're on the same tier. Yeah. They're both <sighs> high end wire tier ones for me. JT makes me just want to spend everything mm-hmm. I have on my team for Drake London. Like <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're they're both they're both high end wire receiver ones for me. Like they're in like that wire receiver, they're they're roughly around wire receiver five ish for me. Because I Garrett will say- Wilson, I agree. I can't go that far for Drake London. Because I mean, like, here's an example. Like, do you have Drake London over someone like Jalen Waddle? Yes. No. What? No, I, I don't Jaylen think Jalen Waddle. I think Jalen Waddle is vastly overpriced. I don't know about vastly, but yeah, I, I think Jake, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Jake, I'm with you. What? <laughs> How is he <laughs> overpriced? I think I'll Drake London another- and Waddle should be the same price. I'll give another yeah, example. Devontae Smith. Oh, Drake London easily over. I'll take Drake London over Devontae Smith, but it's not by much. Oh, man, I'll take tough. Waddle. I would take Waddle and Devontae Smith over Drake London. Give me Devontae Smith. Yeah, give me Devontae all. Smith. All Jalen Waddle has done in his first two years is be wide receiver thirteen in his rookie year, and then wide receiver eight in his sophomore year at the yeah, age true. of twenty-four. What do you want from the guy? <laughs> Nothing. It's just Drake London's also very good. <laughs> Mm, I don't know. Maybe I will take Waddle over him. I'm taking both those guys over Drake London. Devontae Smith just had 900 yards as a rookie, then last year at 1,200 yards as a wide receiver two option, and he's paired with Jalen Hurts for the long term. The only thing hurting Drake London is his situation. They think right, but that's, right, I, but that 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 does count. <laughs> Yeah, but if you buy too much into it, that's how you get screwed. That's how. That's no, how you I'm, lose. I mean, listen, I we all have Drake London as a very high end wide receiver to put him over guys like Waddle or, or even in the same tier as Garrett Wilson. Like, look, if just... I'm gonna tra- if I'm gonna trade for them one for one, well, obviously right now Dr- Jalen Waddle is rated higher than Drake London, like, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. But if you're telling me I want one guy on my team for the rest of like eternity, I want Drake London. Actually, I'd want Garrett Wilson, speed. but. We've seen well, the I'd speed want kill before. Jalen Waddle Jaylen. is fucking nice. I'm taking Jalen Waddle. I, I, the only thing I don't like about Jalen Waddle, and listen, this could very well just be his game, right? Like, I, I think that this was a, a bad argument against Tyler Lockett, and that's why I bought a bunch of him. He just popped off in a handful of games and has so many games where he doesn't even get five targets. It's like... Why am I talking about uh, the listen, same guy? Yeah, dude, go Jake look at him. There just was, went to like, his Dave stats. Jones had basically <laughs> the same targets per game as, as Jalen Waddle. Uh, like, Jalen Waddle is not a Yeah, no, Frank's right. I'm looking yeah, at his targets. I guess so. And if dude. I'm spending like a shit fuck of draft capital, like multiple first paying for a receiver, a top five receiver, that dude's gonna check the target box. I mean, I mean, listen, I mean but, as a yeah, rookie, I mean, as a rookie, Jones. he had 140 targets. As a rookie, yeah, I was gonna say Jalen Waddle. As a rookie, Tyree Kill wasn't there. Thirteen, but like also as a rookie, Tua wasn't dead half the games. So like, thirteen fifty yards and eight touchdowns at his age twenty three season. Yeah, I understand that, but that's price. That's part of the price. Like, (laughs) 
you know, it's not it's not like Jalen Waddle is being valued like Deontay Johnson here. You know, it's this is a dude you're paying multiple firsts potentially plus for him. Yeah. But we're saying we're talking about Drake London and how you guys view he compares to some of these top young receivers. Yeah, no, uh, I, 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 I mean, I'd have up, Waddle over London. I, I'll have. And I haven't even London. brought up some other names like how how do you compare him to a guy like like a T Higgins? Do you do you guys know? Do you know how many more targets Drake uh, Jalen Waddle had than Drake London this year? Probably do you know what not many? Wait, let me, guess, let me guess. Let me guess. Eight. Eight. Okay. Jay? I was gonna go like fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Be, yeah, zero. They had the same. <laughs> they had the exact same amount of targets. The exact right. same. And, you know, a lot of and who's so much more with his? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Because Marcus Mariota was Drake London's quarterback, and the team ran the ball thirty times a game. I, it's I, not like it, yeah, I, but also Waddle's just a more explosive player with the ball in his hand. This what is I'm fact. concerned about with Waddle is <laughs> that last year, that especially the first half of the season, but for most of the season dream scenario for the dolphins that offense destroyed everyone but like like my argument and we see oh crap i gotta charge my laptop <laughs> um <All right. laughs> like we see with a bunch of these nasty offenses that d- take the league by storm all the defensive coordinators you know they're they're chilling at these coaching meetings they're going to freaking wherever island coaches go to i have no idea um maybe like the keys i don't know what do you think they're doing when they're sipping their their mojito on the beach? They're, they're thinking realizing, about how to stop the fucking dolphins. They're realizing that none of their corners can keep up with. Yeah, it doesn't corners. matter. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna like build. And, like these you don't think everyone's trying to figure out how to stop lie. Jamar Chase and T Higgins? It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I don't think they are because I think they look at the Bengals and just think like, well, shit, they've just got the nastiest players. To me, the Dolphins beat people by scheme a lot of it. It was like yeah, dude, they have two of the most explosive but receivers in football. It, it's these, these defensive backs just can't keep up with these receivers. Yeah, but I I think that like from a scheme perspective, there's ways that you can sh- like uh, not that you're gonna shut them down, but like shut Jalen Waddle down. I yeah, I think it's like to pair him to all the other top receivers. Like I think I'd have an easier time shutting down Jalen Waddle than shutting down Cooper Cup. Tyree Kill, Jamar Chase, even fucking Devonte Smith, like, and potentially now Drake London, and I think that's shown also by the fact that he's not a super target hog, Jalen Waddle, where Tyree Kill in that offense I mean, was he, a super I mean, target he, hog. What, I mean, he I think was it was last hog. year was all sunshine and roses, and if it's not sunshine and roses next year, those numbers are going to be down, down. I say, doesn't matter. I'm bought <laughs> in. I'm on the Frank wagon. Uh, Tyreek Hill wasn't going anywhere. Tua is still there. But you won't be able to stop both of them. And they're going to stop Tyreek Hill first. Right. Waddle no, I think to... they stopped Jalen Waddle first because Tyreek Hill's better. <laughs> well, they're going to scheme to stop Tyreek Hill, is the, what Lunas is trying to say. Yeah. So that would leave Jalen Waddle open. No, nah, see, I think you guys got it twisted. You scheme to take out Jalen Waddle because at least you can take his ass out. You can't scheme to take out Tyree Kill. You can't scheme to take. You can't take out either. Neither of them can be kept up with. I I think Jalen Waddle. You can scheme his ass out, and that's why he was not getting 160 targets. No, he wasn't getting 160 targets because the other guy on the other side was getting 160 targets. Exactly, because he's better. Yeah, Yeah, I'm not saying he's not. Jalen Waddle was still productive. It's the same thing with Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith had 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns. Like. He's still going off just because AJ Brown is better and getting fifteen hundred yards doesn't mean Devontae Smith isn't still like a beast. It's the well, same situation. All right, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get into these arguments. Let's let's uh Jake, come on. Do we do the startup thing or do we do that next week? I kind of uh, labeled right, the right. title of this the episode. <laughs> we could do I say we should go through like the first two rounds real quick. Let's do okay. yeah. And then we could continue next week. Sure. First two minutes. Right. Okay, I'm oh. gonna need some help from from people in the chat. All right, actually, if we're just doing the first round, I can. I'll I'll pull up the first two rounds and I'll make it nice and big. Oh. Okay, here we go. So we had the idea of going through this site from the Bulletproof guys. Follow him on Twitter, all that stuff. This is made by I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, I say Adieko. Adieko whatever his name is sweet website got a lot of tools they're awesome 
uh, enjoy their content, all that stuff. We were going to go through by round and kind of look at it from a startup lens and just say like, okay, what picks we like, what picks we don't like, general game theory for startups. And we can start off with the first couple rounds, um, first two. So mm -hmm. we're going to go with the first round. I mean, I think this is generally speaking, looking at it pretty standard stuff. The one thing that's really surprising me compared to last year is how much higher these wide receivers are going. They're like we saw Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase as first round picks last year, but now CD Lamb raised his ADP by about a full round. And now we see Jalen Waddle, Garrett Wilson, Amon Ross St. Brown, similar player, and AJ Brown, right? Similar players all to that same tier of T. Higgins and all those dudes last year going a full round higher into the second round than the third round where most of them were going. But let's start off with round one. <laughs> What's the bait pick here in Justin round Fields. one? I know. Justin I was going to say, like, the answer is Justin Fields. Really? Yeah, like, I know it's like only a one spot difference, but drafting Justin Fields ahead of Lamar Jackson is crazy to me. Look, I get it. The, the Bears have me. fully committed to Justin Fields, they've invested everything to him. But at the end of the day, he wasn't that great of a passer he got sacked like the most in the league he took the longest to pass like there, there's a lot going against justin fields that kind of got masked by his huge rushing touchdown like his long rushing runs rushing runs thanks jt um but he he to me like this team the, the front office is not the same front office that drafted him they're not as committed to him as as you'd think. And if it, if it goes belly up, I think there's a chance that they move off him. Um, so I'm not fully committed to Justin Fields at the price of a first-round yeah. startup pick. I mean, listen, he had a great back end of the year last year, but like we still saw the ugly at the beginning. We still saw, I know people are going to say, oh, he's getting used to the NFL. Sure, but like... We still saw the ugly that we saw in his rookie year. I'm not ready to give him a first round evaluation just based on what six games, whatever it was at the end of the year. Um, again, like Luna said, that taking him ahead of Lamar Jackson is is foolish. And even over guys that are we'll talk about later, like guys from the beginning of the second round, we're talking Watson, Dak, Kyler. Like even over guys like that, I just don't don't agree with. I actually think that the bait pick in this round is CD Lamb. I mean, and sure. He's another. Because um, yeah, I mean, like, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into bait. the names, but the next three wide receivers, I think I might have ahead of CD. I don't even think necessarily that. It's like, dude, you look at the quarterbacks you have to pick from in the third round compared to the receivers you pick in the third round. Bro, if I start off my dynasty team, with I, even on this ADP, fucking waiting till Drake London to be my wide receiver one, like we were talking about, or Devontae Smith, I am not terribly unhappy. They nope. they can be my low end wide receiver one, and now I have high end quarterbacks back to fucking yeah. back. Boom, boom. Like what up? I mean, you could just look at Team Ten, right? They started with Lamar and Dak. If you start a, any dynasty super flex draft with Lamar and Dak, you're going to be pretty happy with yourself. So that kind of brings me into my second point here. Um, when you look at the second round quarterbacks in, I think most specifically Dak and Kyler Murray, I, I still think that Deshaun is tough to value. I'd probably value him the last of all of the quarterbacks that go in the first two rounds. Um, oh no, I'd value him at like quarterback six. But nonetheless, I'm still Oof. fine taking him. Having one of these late first round picks actually feels way better this year than it's felt in I, I, I agree. years. I agree. The fact I think that, if you if you can leave like the first two rounds with like I mean Jake mentioned like like a Lamar and Dak or like a Lamar I mean that could have been Lamar and Kyler. Yeah, right? I was gonna say Lamar and Kyler or even one of those like like you grab like an AJ Brown. Um that's that's where I find the value to be really strong. 
I just think like when you look at last year, the guys that you were taking in the early second, Justin Fields, um, just Jalen Hurts was going like mid second, um, kind of all over the place depending on who grabbed him. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was generally going late first, and then obviously there was there was busts like Trey Lance and whatnot. This year, the quarterbacks going in the early second and and all throughout the first round all seem safe, other than Justin Fields. Yeah, it was, it was definitely risky, but like considering his ADP, there's multiple other quarterbacks that you can pick from at the end of the first. If he lasts till the early second and you want to take another quarterback, he's probably just going to be one of the last guys left. But nonetheless, like having him as a QB two or paired with another elite quarterback when you land a 111 or a 110 in a startup draft, really fucking nice. Other thing, 101. Are we assuming this is Bijan every time at 101 yes. here? Yeah. Yes. What do we yeah. think of Bijan's value in the startup draft? On fair, is... overvalued, undervalued? Fair. <sighs> Maybe even under. I'd take him over B, uh, Justin Fields. I might take him over. Justin yeah, but Lewis. that's just because I think Justin Fields is a little bit too high. I think at that pick, when I look at some of the people that are going after him, I just like can't the, like, I, like the price that it would take to jump from 204 to 111. Would you rather have Brees Hall in that difference or Bijan? I'm going to take Brees Hall in the difference, right? I think I that's, will take that's the also the issue here is that like there's just too many quarterbacks on the board for me to 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 pass it up for for Bijan here, especially like in recent years, like we we're talking about earlier, like it, you know, this was the Jonathan Taylor pick last year and things like that. Like, I wasn't as sure of quarterbacks at that pick as I am now, and yeah. I think I just think you know, guys, even like like a Deshaun Watson, right? We've seen Deshaun Watson be a top five quarterback before. Like, we've seen Dak Prescott be it. We've seen Kyler Murray be it. Like, if you're gonna tell me I'm gonna take a running back in a super flex league over a guy like those, like those quarterbacks available. I just think I'm going to have a hard time doing it. I think in my opinion, the price is fair. The price itself. I don't have a problem with. It's just the guys that are picked after him. And I'm just like, I, if I'm starting a super flex team and you are telling me I'm going to take a running back over Kyler Murray. No, I'm not. Right, and I agree. Like, I'm taking Kyler Murray and even Dak Prescott probably right. like very early second or well, like right. last pick of the first. Well, let's let's play a game. We move Kyler into Justin Fields' spot. We mm -hmm. move Bijan back one spot, and we put Dak Prescott in front of him. CD is still behind him. Sure. Do you think that's a fair price there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially right. because at that pick, you're still you're just getting the last quarterback. And or the wide receiver one or wide receiver two if they fall, right? Like, right. but I imagine mm -hmm. they're gonna go before. Um nonetheless, that yeah, like 112 is actually like not horrible this year because you it's not horrible, you're at the are, are end you guys, of the year break. Are you guys a thousand percent taking Bijan over AJ Brown and CD Lamb? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Cause at worst I'll turn around and trade them for C D plus, right? So like mm -hmm. Just yes. I just okay. think the fact of the matter is, is that I like that's such a fair price for the RB one. Like I then three picks later, if I'm building a hero RB build at that point, like three picks later, some dudes taking Brees Hall. Like I don't yeah. hate Brees Hall, but man, I got I got so that's a massive value difference in my opinion. Yeah, I mean you want to play a running back game, right? Bijan, tier of his own kind of thing. Brees Hall's the next best running back. Torn ACL. Who knows how long it takes for him to fully recover? And by fully recover, I mean like even with Saquon Barkley, who's like a superhuman, it still took him a while to get back to full speed. Next up, Christian McCaffrey, old. Next up, Jonathan Taylor, solid. Uh, had a fall down year from last year, but uh, you know, pretty good. Next, Kenneth Walker, get out of here. <laughs> Frankly, yeah. I don't even think I'd Kenneth Walker in his top twelve running backs. Um, and then after that, I mean Saquon old, and then you could just keep knocking everyone after that. Old. Old. I just called Christian Caffrey old. Saquon's what yes, year younger? It's a factor Two. in his price. 
it's a factor in his price. Like, if 20. he was Saquon if he was younger, 26. he'd be twenty up in the second five. Saquon Barkley age. I think he might be turning twenty six this season though. Listen, hey, he's twenty six. He's twenty six. I agree. That, like oh. Saquon, I'd just plop where Kenneth Walker is. I guess I, I'd probably take Pitts over him. Um, think about yeah, they're both twenty six. McCaffrey really? and Saquon are both twenty six. Yeah, thank you. Well, McCaffrey's about to turn twenty seven. So yeah, he is. Yeah, but doesn't McCaffrey just have a way higher career points per game than Saquon does? Mm, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm not saying take McCaffrey over. I'm not saying take Barkley over McCaffrey. I'm just the old our comment was. Okay, so yeah, generally old. speaking, first round is pretty standard, right? You either get one of the clear top receivers in the league or the quarterback of your choice, wherever you're at. Now we go into the second round. Whoever your wide receiver three is, where are you picking them in this round? As soon as all the quarterbacks are off the board. Yeah, after after Deshaun and Kyler, probably also after Dak. Yeah, after Dak as well. Yeah, so... I, yeah, I'm I taking him pretty you. much... I mean, maybe take Brees Hall, but like even still, like running back off an ACL tear, like. No, I think I think you take your wide receiver three at two hundred three because one twelve yeah. you would have one twelve to two hundred two. That's where you put in Watson, Dak, Kyler, and then if you want to take Brees Hall over your wide receiver three, I mean that would be the debate. For me personally, I have AJ Brown as my wide receiver three versus yeah. Brees Hall. I think I would lean AJ Brown. I just think the receiver is safer there, and yeah. I always go with the mantra in rookie drafts of you can't win your draft in the first two rounds, but you can definitely lose it. So I would take the guy that I know is going to be producing for the next five years at least. Um. All right, yeah, I, I guess, like, looking at this round more um, – this Second should round be is a fucking solid. heavy round. This should I'm be a shocked round. also that the 103 pick is not in this for second round. Because I would assume people, like, assuming that pick this. is Stroud. One of Stroud I think, or Boston, I think, I mean. Should go in the second round. Right, I agree. I think both of them should go in the second yeah. round. I think, I'm I surprised think, Pitts isn't going in the second I, round. That, yeah. that as well. I I wouldn't trade. 102 slash 103. Well, I guess to me they're kind of equivalent. It's just whatever quarterback falls. Yeah, it's, um, they're both good quarterbacks. Yeah, I wouldn't trade Kenneth Walker for that pick. No, nope. <laughs> I mean, I like I wouldn't trade that pick for Kenneth Walker. I'm right. just taking that quarterback. I wouldn't take trade that pick for Amon Ra mm-hmm. t- either. I probably, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't even. Amon trade Ra I like a little more, but still, it's. Uh, I'll take 102 or 103 uh, over Amon. Quarterbacks are so hard to come by. I might Kyle Pitts definitely Amon. belongs in that second round, though. I mean, I think it's once again goes down to your philosophy, right? Like, A, how heavy do you want to invest in quarterback? Because one of the advantages that you have at this part of the round where you're debating, oh, Amon Ra or 103, if it's no third round reversal, that you have the top three quarterbacks, right? Like, and you could just go with your classic, I have Mahomes, and then I pick up like, two or three QB threes towards the back half of the startup draft. And then I'm chilling or I just trade for, for whoever. Right. And I have my hero QB. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Like one of the things I will say looking further down the draft is that man, drafting running backs fucking blows. It's horrible. Yeah. I like it's so bad. Like, there's not, like, a single pick where I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd love to take that running back there. Other and other than the ones, Javante and old ones, where it's like, okay, well, for production, short term, if you can win, they're great. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, like, if, you, like, if you're looking for a quick production, like, do you want to draft, like, Aaron Jones in the second half of the ninth round? Yeah, like, it will give you production. You look at maybe, like, a David Montgomery in the 10th or, like, a J.K. Dobbins in the 7th. I mean, even if you're looking at, what? like, Kamara in the 11th, like, sure, yeah. fine. But, like, how much more does Kamara have in the tank? Like, it's just running back position as a whole right now is just a mess. And I'm kind of happy that in a lot of my leagues, I'm not holding a bunch of these guys. Which I, I think does give merit to a, a classic, right? You just pick up your Jonathan Taylor in the mid-second. 
and that's the running back that you build your team around now for the rest of the draft you can basically just stack receivers because i will say t higgins compared to amon Ra, compared to olave compared to Devonte smith compared to dk compared to london it's like these guys are going rounds apart but realistically are they the that tier. different no no They're the same too so i mean based on this would you guys say like the rb2 in your lineup should be the val- the position you value the least absolutely i've said this before and like yeah. i'm very much a and i le- i think i just i've talked about this before during the season like hero rb where you have one running back that you know is good and is and, and is all fine and, and and like you can count on week in week out to be that rb you know rb1 you can plug and play that rb2 so easily with you know just value guys like james connor and antonio gibson and brian robinson like there's a whole slew of guys and i'm yeah, sure there'll be more that pop up like you can even go as low as like a jeff wilson a moster like there's going to be guys throughout the year that are starting running backs putting up points that you could just pl- like pick up for a third and plug and play in your rb2 for a season and then next year do the same thing like great you're costing yourself some thirds but like you can pick that back up and no problem so, like, to me, it's just not worth investing heavily in running back right now when there's appearing to be a lot of turnover in the position. And and at the same time, like, this running back class looks pretty deep, right? at least right now, you know, pre-draft and everything. So, like, I wouldn't be shocked to see more more running backs lose their jobs in, in the future. I, I, I just think one of the things I hate looking at this running back board is I'm going through all of them. And I think I can make an argument for about 80% of them that they are pretty overpriced. Agreed. I've long been saying that. I've been on that train for a little while now. Like, I'm sorry, but this is crazy, some of these prices. Right? Like, and even for these dudes that seem like smash picks, right? Like, oh, drafting Derrick Henry compared to Pat Fryermuth, but it's like, I don't know. The more I do startups, the more I will never make just like clear value losing plays again. Because yeah, you can win, but it fucking sucks. Like Jake said, if you don't hit the startup draft and win, you're fucked. You're you are fucked. Yeah. Wait, you think you can get that first round pick for Aaron Jones that you drafted the ninth? Good luck. You're screwed. But compared to if you just take would I, like Rashad Bateman or whatever rookie pick is going around here, 202, 201. Like those are just much better in because I could just turn around and sell that shit for that same player whenever I want. So I don't know. I, I guess that's like a word of warning. And oh crap, did I scroll down? Any any other final thoughts on the second round and potential strategies, things like that? I'm really conflicted between whether or not to take my running back here or go for this receiver in this tier. You're muted, Jake. Unless you're getting, you know, the 101 or honestly, like Jonathan Taylor and like maybe Brees Hall. I'm probably just taking wide receivers here. Give me Garrett Wilson, right? Give me Garrett Wilson. Give me Jalen Waddle. Give me T. Higgins. Give me A.J. Brown. Give me all these younger wide receivers that I know I'm, I'm going to have to be able to count on. I'm going to play the value game here at running back. It's just not a question in my mind. Even if you want to say, like, you could pick up Javante and Najee in the fifth round. Like, that is fine. If I end up with those two guys, I'm fine. Like, yeah, it's, there's no problem with that. Like, even like if you go further down the list like great give me jamal williams in the 13th round like fine i I, like Mm -hmm. you'll be okay but like if you get like even but like i know you said like if you end up with drake london as your wide receiver one you're fine as well but like that the value is just like if you get garrett wilson and drake london is now your wide receiver two and you have a quarterback like you're looking a lot like to me you can find a running back here later on that that's just going to put up enough points to, to make your team competitive and if and if you know when you know when time comes if you need to make a move for a running back then you shell out for one that you know is going to be good and you're not going to play this 
oh, well, I'm taking Derrick Henry at age 35, and I don't know how much he has before the cliff comes. Like, I don't want to play that game. I just don't want to play that game. And I'm just going to take the running back, uh, the receivers, and, and and the quarterbacks in these first two rounds, and just that's it. Move on, move yeah, along with my day. So one of the questions I wanted to ask is that because I don't necessarily disagree with that line of thinking, but you could kind of go with like a neglect running back strat where you just say fuck the running back position and say because in this startup draft I, i'm looking at the board i, I think that like i said 80 percent of these dudes i i just think are being overdrafted you just wait till the draft's over and trade for them i mean you draft it's not that you don't draft any like where you can take a guy or two that you like but you just primarily stack every other position on your roster and then come around and say okay i'll i'll trade for your derrick henry now that the draft's over, but I'm not trading a where is he on the board? Right? Like I, I picked my Deontay Johnson and my Terry McLaurin over him, and now I can get him for whatever his price is, right? Like that late first or yeah. or whatever it costs. I'm not even sure I would trade for Derrick Henry, but no. I'm yeah, tra- trading nightmare. a late first for Derrick Henry d- d- does no. just seem so ballsy. Sounds like a nightmare. Um, I mean, man, drafting all those old running backs really is interesting because, like, I look at a guy like Nick Chubb that I can get for RB13 price. That's pretty attractive just to take as a guy to, like, sit and burn on my team. But it it doesn't feel good making that pick and having that player on your roster, and unless you've won the championship, basically. I mean, there um, is some strategy to just going all in right away because you feel a lot of people are going to play the long game in these startups. So if you feel you go to championship in the first two years, I think it makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's tough, especially when you kind of have like younger guys that are options that may have a higher long-term ceiling like a jk dobbins or swift um but i mean i don't understand it because nick chubb is just a fucking monster he he might be a, a special case because i do think that he is one of those players that can have success later into his career with how talented he is and i i, I just think he's built different bro like that no, that dude's he, built different no, you know if is. there's anyone to, to, to just keep going i think it's nick chubb Dude's a beast, mm-hmm. right? Like he's a fucking monster, yeah. So him aside, like I almost feel like making the argument of, oh, well, I'm gonna draft the safe veteran every pick is almost like the 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 wacky old guy who spent his entire life, you know, waiting for the downfall, like the doomsday prepper that never comes and then you just wasted away everything preparing for the downfall. It's like you were being so safe th- taking these veteran players that all of a sudden, one you're or fucked. two didn't pan out, and now you're fucked because you took a bunch of depreciating assets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a good point. That's, a that's good the major argument I have against that strategy that I feel like happens because it can work, right? Like, okay, cool. I won the championship, and now I have my depreciating assets, and like maybe we can do it again. But like, that's the upside. <laughs> like, that's mm. that is the only upside. Yeah. Whereas if you draft young, it's like, okay, well, if I hit the good ones, like, cool, now, now we're winning and, and we have appreciating assets. We we gain value. Mm-hmm. No, I'm with you. Um, I mean, that's the way I do it. <laughs> Team old guy is a sneaky <laughs> tender year one strategy. It's hell after that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I feel like every draft that I look back, all the picks I end up really regretting are old players. And the young players that I whiff on, it's like, shit, man, shit happens. Like, You end up hitting more so. Especially when you like get your quarterbacks figured out, one of the more volatile positions early, and you just kind of make like the best of both world picks, where it's like, okay, it's a good player that doesn't have insane risk, right? Like a Hollywood. Basically, at Hollywood, wherever you get him at ADP, it's like a good fucking pick. It's safe. The guy's good. He's young. 
checks a lot of boxes, right? To me, where's McLaurin going? Seventh round? Yeah, generally speaking, I guess Brandon Ayuk is going behind him is an even better buy, right? Like, young, good, checks all the boxes, right next to Hollywood. Boom, yeah. smash pick. Um, I guess last point, last point, very last one. What about trading out of the first or second round in your startup? No. I, I don't... I I'm just never man. think you get the value necessary to do it. Not because even in the like, second? No. No. I, I, like, You're getting like a cornerstone player there. Like, and I know like you can kind of make it try to seem like maybe you add up these small pieces, but some fizzle out, some don't always pan out. Like if I know for sure I'm getting like a Garrett Wilson or I'm getting um, like a AJ Brown or CD, or Brees Hall, like that's you're set at that position for years, and an asset that's like gonna increase because it's not like a lot of the, it's not like those guys who are going in the second are like old and it's gonna depreciate. Most of the, like I think if most if not all are expected to increase value. Like there's no one really old going in the second round. Like Brees Hall, I expect his value to increase. I guess McCaffrey would be the exception. But like, yeah, I'm just not going to draft McCaffrey. I'd much rather like just take everyone out. else. Where would you be valuing Kyle Pitts in this draft? Get a curiosity, JT. Like mid second. Um. Yeah. Maybe even closer to early second. Like once we talk Wait. about, Wait it's second. all the quarterbacks. It's most of the quarterbacks. I have him valued right around Dak Prescott. So right there, he's right in the conversation with Brees Hall. Um. I think I'd rather have him than C.D. Lamb and A.J. Brown, just because I think you get similar guys like Garrett Wilson later. But you guys wouldn't even do like a trade, like trying to trade back your two eleven into like the fourth, early fourth, and pick up value that way. I, I if, if I'm going with a straight receiver strategy, right, where I think Drake London and yeah, if it's going to be a receiver, then yeah, if it's not a receiver, then I wouldn't. Depends on what position I'm going for. Because I think the receivers there, yeah, it's fair. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at a Metcalf, you look at a London, you look at a Vontae Smith. I think it's fine. Just because I I look at the board, and if I was able to stack, like, sixth and fifth and seventh round picks and even eighth round picks, I'm looking at a lot of these receivers going, um, man, you could get a really solid core of, like, good middle-aged receivers. I mean, I get that. Like, you got guys like Ayuk, uh, Marquise Brown, McLaurin, Godwin. Um, I mean, Traylon in in the sixth, right? Like, he's a dude that is, if he hits, he's he's gonna go basically double in value. I yeah, even me, uh, like I'm, I'm a on this is too much of a gamble all, but yeah, i just don't know how much i especially when you're looking at those like surefire studs in the second round who you know for a fact are going to increase value yeah like garrett wilson i think could easily put himself into that first round yeah oh yeah garrett wilson i i'm not even including him in it because i i agree mm-hmm. with you right like garrett wilson i'm valuing early mid-ish second and i mm-hmm. would probably pick the player there but there's a yeah. decent amount of guys in that that I think can do even in a third round, I guess, at the beginning of the third round. But Garrett Wilson, Kyle Pitts, um, I'm looking at Kyler Murray, Brees Hall, I think could all put themselves in first round potential. Yeah, yeah, especially, yeah, you said. Also, by the way, with this board, if I were to give a piece of advice, take all the rookie picks and shift them up half the round. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like they're all Those underpriced by about a half a round. I mean, maybe a little bit less than that for some. Maybe not 101, but the others. Yeah, some of these earlier ones are generally pretty accurately priced, but I, I feel like as you get later down the board, it's like, man, are we're really taking that guy over a mid first? Like, yeah. especially some of these fucking quarterbacks, man. These quarterbacks are drastically overpriced on here. The, the mid ones. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, we're really taking freaking kirk cousins at 108 109 value get the fuck out of here <laughs> gino smith kirk cousins either gino smith ahead of one you're probably right 
Yeah. I listen. I don't hate Kirk Cousins, but like, no, no, no. He's yeah, in the mixing paradox. I'm taking well, him. I'm taking him outside of the mixing paradox here. Like, <laughs> if you're telling me I need a quarterback though, and it's between Will Levis and Kirk Cousins, I'm taking Kirk Cousins. Yeah. See, I will just take another receiver and yeah, I mean, fucking obviously, yeah, I'd just rather that deal with the quarterbacks later. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll just neglect it at that point and trade for one. All right. Anything else for nothing of mine? No. All right. Well, geez, this episode ran super long and it's probably all of my fault. But um <laughs> Jake made it this far. Ago. Thank you <laughs> yeah, so Jake much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. We do really appreciate it. Um we'll be back next Tuesday with more dynasty content as per usual. But yeah, thank you so much. Peace out.